everyone my name is shambhavi and today we are just going to discuss about the data set like what we are going to do is like uh, we'll be taking a data set and we're performing some a uh, data analysis some exploration data analysis some mathematics in the that data and we'll just come out with an output so for today i would just tell you that how to like use the data how to use the libraries and after that we'll be moving towards the different type of scatter plots fine i would be telling you that basically how we make scatter plots right so let's get started with the things and for that just let me do one thing let me just do a little bit of zoom in so that you can just have a proper idea and that, that is that is too much right i just okay fine now i have just like it should be visible to everyone of you fine let's get started with the things so for now uh, like what i just told that uh, whenever you want to use any library right so this is the thing that i'm just telling you on my previous data analysis videos and even in my numpy library videos that whenever you want to use any library we basically import that library right now what i would do i would write import and here i would write numpy as np so, so for the ones who are just new for my channel i would let you I'd like to tell you one thing that this is a google collab right this is a service that is a google cloud service which is provided by google and basically here we write our python codes and basically what like not python codes i tell the data analysis on the same because like i just like uh, you say i just like uh, it is very good for using that fine you can just uh, have that thing only right so this is a google collab and basically in this i work for data analysis fine so this is the thing that if i just want to use a library what i would do i would firstly import that library fine so that is import numpy as np fine what next what next if i just want to use any other library what i would do i would write import pandas as pd now what is this pd pd is basically the library so pandas is basically a library that is basically you can say numpy and pandas they both are used for doing the exploration like mathematics and all that thing right so basically what these two this they perform this mathematical things right so for that we use numpy and pandas and numpy is just you can say i have written a short form for numpy as np and i have written a short form for pandas as pd fine this is done now what is i would just do one thing i would import one more library so that is import i would import one more library that we will be using for the making the scatter plots that is mat plot uh, okay here i would just import a library that is seaborn s e a b o r n seaborn as sns okay let's say let's say uh, i have a one more library that is seaborn now what is the seaborn library used for this seaborn library is used for doing the exploratory data analysis eda in the sense that it is used for doing and making the graphs graphs in the sense scatter plots bar plots and bar graphs and pie chart box plot and all that things fine line chart so the c bond is used for doing the exploratory data analysis now it, it is the very first video for this i think so for you about the data analysis new uh, data so here i would just import all the libraries that we would be using for the also so i would just write import matplotlib dot pyplot dot pyplot dot pyplot as pl so basically matplotlib dot pyplot this is also a library only which we basically use for doing that uh, performing the Uh, exploratory data analysis that is it is for use for making the graphs and all that right these are the four libraries which we will be using uh, from the uh, you can say for this data fine so let me just quickly run that and fine it that run fine that is done now what is the next step next step is that i just want to make a variable right i would make a variable in which just i would read my whole data now for reading a data what we use we use a library that is pandas and basically pandas is the short form i have written pd right so i would write pd dot okay so basically what we do we use pandas for reading but here we will not be using that thing because uh, this is the data which today i would be taking that data is uh, is like, like you can say that data is a part of a library that is the seaborn library So here today I haven't downloaded any data or I haven't haven't taken any any you can say website or any link here. What I would do, I would just take a data that some of the libraries have the data on their own. Fine. So I would just take that data for today so that if you have any like you do not face any issue while downloadation or something like that. Fine. So I would write ns sns dot dot. I would write load underscore data set. Fine. And in this bracket I would write. 
uh, tips is one of the data sets that the Seaborn library is also already containing. Fine. So what I have written, I have written t is equal to sns dot load data set and in bracket I have written tips. So basically this is the line from where we'll be loading our data and we'll be using this data. Now I just want to check that what my what are the rows in my data, what are the columns in my data. So what I would do, I would just use a function that is head. Now, what does this head do? This head basically prints the top five rows of your column, or sorry, of your data, whatever the top five rows are of your data. It basically prints that. Fine. So whenever just I would, I just want to check that what are what are the columns, what are the things that are in my data, I would just write t dot head. This head is used for printing the top five rows of your column. And let's say in the bracket, if you write some number, like okay, let's let's say write ten. So it will display you the top ten rows. So basically, this head function is used for displaying the top rows. Fine. Now this is my data set, and it contains some columns like total bill. It has total bill. It has tip. It has gender. It has smoker. It has day. It has type, and it has size. Fine. So these are the Uh, you can see columns which my data is containing fine and now here these are the like values and these are the top five and now if i just want to check about the last five so for last five i will, I will use another function that is it uh, that was t right we were just taking t so i would use t dot tail and the tail would print me the last five rows so this my basically this one contains total 243 rows Right, two forty-three rows. Uh, my data contains two forty-three rows. Fine. So this is the way for checking that. And if you just want to check the shape, I would write t dot shape, and I would just run that. So it just told me that you have two forty-four rows and you have seven columns, right? So this is the you can say shape that is two forty-four rows and it is seven columns. Fine. What next? I have. I have. Uh, you can say uh, here I would be plotting my scatter plot, which I like, which is the main motive for today. That I would be using the library that is SNS. SNS is a short form for my library that is Seaborn, right? So I would use SNS dot, and here I would use a scatter plot. SNS dot is scatter plot. Now so what else I have? I would write x is equal to and in brackets I would just write my that name which I just want to be printed in my x axis. Now what were the columns? Columns were total bill tip. Gender, smoker, day, time, and size. Right? These were the columns which my tips data was having. Fine, right? tips data was having. Now, if I just want to choose one of them, let's say I would choose total bill, total underscore bill. Let's say I just choose this one. I want that total bill should be displayed on my x-axis. And now, what about the y? I just want that on y, this tip would be there. This tip that is the column that is my tip. This tip column, this tip like should be present that side. Fine. So I just wrote tip there. Now what else I have? I here I need to write the data. Here I need to write the data. D A T A data is equal to T. I here I need to write the data that is equal to T. And uh, that T what is this T? This is the T in which I am storing my uh, read. I am reading my data and I am storing my data, right? So this is my T. So basically here what I am doing? I am just writing S N S dot scatter plot. So basically, this is the scatter. This is the use of Seaborn library that is SNS. So this is I have just given my shortcut, right? The SNS is a short form, a short form for writing my Seaborn library. Now, what else? What else I have here is scatter plot. So basically, scatter plot is is used for making. Uh, you can see here I want to make this scatter plot. So what I would do? I would write this scatter plot. Fine. Now here, what is written? Uh, I have taken a variable. That is x, right? In x, what I have stored, I have stored the total bill, and I have taken another uh, variable that is y, and I have stored at the tip. Now on my x-axis, I want total bill to be printed, and on y, I want this tip to be printed. What else I have? I have just taken my data, and data is equal to t. So basically, t is my that variable in which I have stored my data. Now when I would just run this, see. I got a scatter plot here. Now this is how a scatter plot looks like. Fine. This is how a scatter plot looks. So here, what I have done, I have plotted between tip and total bill. I just want to see that what is the ratio and what is the uh, proportion for the total bill and tip, right? So I just plotted this a scatter plot. I hope you got the idea about scatter plot. Now let's say I have to do some more things. Let's say I would just take t, right? Now I would just perform some Things here. Let's say I just want to find that that what is the fraction for tip. Okay. 
to uh, basically f r a c t i n here let's say i just want to find a tiff fraction what i would do i would write t in that t is my variable in which my data is basically read and this tiff fraction right what i would just write t and here i would write t in bracket i would write my function that is tiff this sorry that, that my, the name of my column that is tiff i would just do this here i would write t and in bracket i would write total bill i just want to find the fraction for the tips right so i would just write total bill and now when i would run this it will just basically run and now when i would just want to find out uh, i would just run my uh, you can say head i would write h e a d and here brackets now see i would be getting one more call it uh, like um, one more column added that is tip fraction and basically in tip fraction i would be having the values like the the values for which the tip is divided by total bill so when tip is divided by total bill whatever are the outputs for each and every row that are stored in this tip fraction right so this is the way for making a new column in your data set if you just want to make a new column in your data set this is the way how we do that fine this is done now some more features about the scatter plot so just quickly let me write s in this dot scatter s c a scatter plot and in bracket let's say now i want to just write x is equal to will be that is the same now what else i want to write i want to write y is equal to now i just want to print the tip fraction tip fraction fine f r a c t i o n fine so tip fraction is like uh, one of my columns which i have just recently added it here fine and now what i would do i would write data is equal to t so t is the variable in which my basically data is read so now now just have a quick look over this scatter plot right so what are you just like seeing that the tip fraction is like almost between 0.1 to 0.3 3 it is almost between that but some of these are 0.7 some of those 0.4 this also the but mean majority is between 0.1 to 0.3 fine and for total bill it is between 10 to 30 fine so basically this is how we make a scatter plot right in so this is the way for making your scatter plot now scatter plot has even some more functions in it now one more thing one more function is basically here and that is function is known as hue h u e now what does this basically use for let's quickly see that thing also so i would write s in this dot scatter is say scatter plot right in bracket i would write x is equal to let's say i would write my total bill total underscore bill fine let's say in y i just want to print tip now here i i would write my data is equal to t fine next and the last thing i would write h u is equal to time now i just want to check i think that it at what time what is the like basic uh, that about the uh, what is the basic fraction of the tip and the uh, total bill fine now see what it is showing me it is showing me two different colors that are orange and blue and like i hope you just can see this graph that is present here that is time and your lunch and dinner so basically this yellow one and you can say even it is orange this orange one is demonstrating the dinner right and this blue one is demonstrating the lunch fine so this is basically how you can add one more function that is you this is one more property of the scatter plots and yeah here i just like you just got the point how we make a scatter plot and basically how we uh, load a you can say load a data and what are the libraries needed now further what we'll be seeing we'll be seeing many more plots basically in this uh tips data set only fine further we will be discussing many of these so for now just let me give you an overview about the today's video so it is like uh, i would just importing my libraries which i would be using so that are numpy pandas cpon and matplotlib.py plot and after this as whatever i have written that are the short forms right next what i have done i have written t is equal to t is one of my variable in which basically i have taken and what i have done i have used sns so before the the previous uh, data which i have taken that was google data set in that i have taken pdy because i was having that data in my device only but this is a data which like this library is containing that is c1 so if any library contains any data set so basically we need to use this that library short form that is t is equal to sns dot load underscore data set and here we have tips right what is here i have t dot head so basically head is used to print top five tail is used to print the lower five rows then i just need to check that what are the shape basically rows and columns so i just wrote t dot shape now next i have that i need to print that i need to see what is the scatter plot i want to make a scatter plot 
pen to it is sns dot scatter plot x is equal to total bill y tip and data is equal to t right so this is this was the thing and now if you just want to add one more column in your data what you do basically we make one more column something like this we write the name that variable name that is t and after that in the brackets we write that column name which we want to make and we write that the values which you want to store fine so this is done and after that this is the way for uh, like uh, writing the hue function also in the scatter plot so now i hope you just got the all points about the today's video whatever we have discussed and this was the basic that how we make a scatter plot i hope you got all the points if you have any doubts you can ask that doubts in the comment box or you can even rewatch the video so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye Hello everyone my name is Shambhavi and today we are going to discuss some more tricks and tips about the scatter plots right so basically in the last video what i have told you i have told you about the library that is c1 library and from that what we have seen we have seen basically that how we can just plot some scatter plots using that library right so these are the things which we have discussed in the last video so for today we are just going to see some more features of the scatter plot and after that what we are going to see after that we are going to see one more plot and that plot is known as reg plot okay so just we are going to deal with both of these things today okay so let's start writing so firstly i would write sns so basically what is this sns this is the short form for writing my c1 right so basically in the above side okay just let me show you that thing here what i have written i have written c1 as sns right so basically this means that here i am just using my c1 library and i'm just giving it a short form that is sns okay so i would just write that thing here i would even write sns dot i would just try to make this scatter plot right so i would just try p l o p fine this is my sns dot scatter plot what does i have i would write x is equal to and here i would just give the column that is total underscore bill okay so basically total underscore bill is my column which i have just given here right now what else i have i have y is equal to okay now it was another column just let's go above and verify the things so these were the columns which i uh, which i was having and yeah after doing some operations what we have done we have just made one more column and that column was tip fraction right so i was having total bill tip gender smoker date time size and tip fraction fine right? so these were the columns which i was having now here i have just uh, given the name for my x column as total bill and for my y i have given here the value as tip now what else i need to do here is that i would just write data is equal to right so if you have just in my previous video for the same thing so you have just got an idea that basically how we make this scatter plot right so here just i'm telling you that thing only now here i would just add that hue okay hue means that basically it it should just gives us a different colors okay just let me show you the same thing okay fine i will just run this thing okay now just have a look that here whatever the circles like small dots i have they are in different colors so basically i was having the smoker as two conditions yes or no so basically this is a tip status right so there it was like something that do you need a smoker or right no okay so they was having two conditions yes or no. that is why my graph which i have just made here that turn blue and yellow that the dots which are present they are in two colors that are yellow and blue sorry that you can say just orange okay orange or blue right so i hope you got the idea about this scatter plot that is as in a short scatter plot and here hue is equal to smoker now let's see if i just want to change this hue okay i just don't want to write this i would just take it to days okay so i would write as in a dot scatter plot and in the bracket i would write x is equal to total bill total underscore bill right now what else i would write i would write y is equal to here i would write fine what else i would write i would write data is equal to fine i would just even write hue is equal to and here i would just put the fine so basically this is the way that basically you can even uh, add this another thing and here what i have now okay just let me stay here only yeah so what is this is hue i have just put the date so the, the days which are present in my data are thursday friday saturday and sunday so according according to that only the colors of my scatter plot change and yeah you can just have a little bit of look also that basically the highest tip that was given that was given on sending highest bill and even a highest tip right so on uh, so, sorry that is saturday green is saturday fine so this is the main idea about the using the scatter plot 
Now, I even have some more parameters in the scatter plot. So, what I would do, I would write SNS dot. I would write scatter plot, and inside this, I would just give x is equal to. Let's say I'm I'm just going to work all of the things above my total bill only, right? Okay. I need to just uh, give these brackets here. I would just write p, and I would just close this bracket also, fine. What x? Uh, like I have given the value for x. Now I would just do the same thing for y. I would just write. Okay. Now what else I have? I would write data is equal to t, fine. Next, what I would write, I would just write hue, okay, and hue, and hue is equal to what else I would write? Um, let's say I would just give the hue as size now, size, okay. Now, let's quickly run that thing, and yeah, like it's taking a little bit time for the okay, fine. Here I got. So basically, size is the size just means that the what is the family size, right? One, two, three, uh, one member, two member, three member, four, five, or six members, right? So this is the respective of the size. So basically, here we can just have an idea of the total bill that basically what is the total bill of the family size, fine? So here the colors denote the family size. On the y axis, we have tip and on the x axis we have total bill so from this we can just come to a conclusion that okay this much of family members are costing this much and they are just giving this much of tip fine so this is the whole idea about this now even we have one more parameter that is style so for that just let me write that scatter plot once more i would write sns dot scatter plot and i would write x is equal to total bill fine? total underscore bill now what i would do i would write y is equal to and here i would write fine now what i would do i would write data is equal to what else i would do i would just write u is equal to let's say i would just put that size only now here my next parameter comes and that parameter is a style okay i would write a style and here i would just write okay i would just write okay gender fine so here i would just quickly run this program and after running it, just let's see that what's the output we are getting. So here what I have done here, this discolored dot, okay, this is denoting the males. And this cross that is present here, this is denoting the females. So here we can just have an idea about that, how many males and how many females come to this, uh, this hotel. And what is the like total bill, what is the total tip, and what is the size of the family, and all that things we can just have a guess from this side, okay. We have this parameter that is style fine now what x and what next i have next i have this written and uh, now i just want to add one more parameter now i want this thing okay Let, let's have one more thing here i would just write um okay. i would write sns dot scatter dot okay sns or scatter plot what i would write x is equal to total underscore bill okay this is my total underscore bill then what i would write i would write y is equal to what I would write data is equal to T. Fine. Now, what else I would write? I would write U is equal to D. Uh, let's say we just add U is equal to size. Okay. Size. What else I was having? I was having style is equal to. Okay. So, I just put one extra this side. And yeah. Okay. So, style is equal to this. And what next I have? Next I have here one more parameter. And that parameter is size. Okay, the size is equal to, and I even want to just put that size only for my this thing, and I will just run the program. Now, see what output did I get here? So, fine. Now, you can just have a look that uh, this, this uh, like, whatever the, uh, you can see the circles are there. They are little, big, small, and something like that, right? So, this is the basically whole idea about putting these parameters. Now, what else I have? I have this box present here, this side, right? Now, if we just want that this box should, should be present at this corner because like it is coming in between the, uh, you can say data, right? In between the plot it is coming. So what I would write, I would just firstly write the code for the scatter plot. And next I would add some, some more parameters. So just let me write as in this dot scatter plot. In bracket, I would write x is equal to total underscore bill, right? I would write y is equal to, then I would put the tip. Now what I would do, I would write data is Data is equal to t. Fine. What I would next write, I would write hue is equal to size. Fine. Now, uh, yeah, hue was size. Now, what, I, what next I would write, I would write style is equal to this. And next, what I would write, I would write size 
yeah size is equal to size and here i would just do enter and here I would, I would just use my plotly library matplotlib.plotly which we have just printed as plt right i would just go up in all this and just show you that thing so i would write plt dot this legend is one of the functions which is like here you can just get a look that basically why we are using this so i would just write here b box underscore so, okay, B box underscore two and underscore anchor. So basically, this is used for shifting of the thing which I just told you. And here I would just put uh, this, and here I would just write 1.05 comma one. Okay, and I would just put the semicolon this way. Now, as soon as I will run my program, now see, now have a look at the, the like this box which I was just saying. Now, this box has come to out of my scatter plot. Okay, so this is the main idea about using this. PLT dot legend B box to anchor. This is basically used for changing the. You can see it was just present this side. So here I just give some dimensions and it had just brought this box to the side. Fine. Now let me go above once more. Yeah. So this was the library which I was talking about. That is import matplotlib dot py plot as PLT. Fine. So this was the library which I was talking with you that I have uh, like downside when I just use that legend here. Or just let me go to that side only. Yeah, here we are. I have just used this legend. So I have used it with the plotly library that is PLT. I just showed you that I have given the short form from matplotlib.pyplot, right? This is done. Now I was just talking that we will just be dealing with one more plot that is REG plot, right? So now just let's quickly plot that also. So I would write it's in this dot REG plot. So it is rec plot, okay? REG PLOT rec plot. Now what I would do, I would just put this and uh, let's say I would just add some columns so let's say here i would be taking the same one which we were dealing before and that is total bill fine i would just put a comma i would write y is equal to fine now what i would do i would write data is equal to find so these are the things which are just done here and this is over and now when i would just put this column and now when i would just run that the semicolon okay semicolon uh, yeah so this is my so this is my a plot which i just got here that is reg plot so basically this reg plot is the one which uh, just shows us a line also right so that i just have a line also this side fine so it just basically give, gives us a perfect line for a plot which which we have just plotted fine so this is done now if you just want to change my values i would write s in this dot reg plot and here i would write x is equal to total underscore bill fine and now what i would do i would write y is equal to and here i would just give one more that is tip fraction okay tip fraction now what i would do i would write data is equal to t. what else i would write i would just run so here i have just changed the things and now you can just have a proper look that basically my graph has also changed so when i was just doing this thing when i was writing y is equal to tip so my line was like upside right it was just going upside now when i'm just writing this strip fraction so basically it is going this down fine i hope it has got the idea about this reg plot and basically reg plot has one more parameter that is sns dot reg plot and basically here what we have x is equal to total underscore bill right now what else i have i have y is equal to tip fraction okay tip underscore fraction my data is equal to t and i have here one part that is marker right so marker is basically used for changing the dots like this circles to the another sign so let's say here i just put the okay so like it is showing me some error that basically marker is equal to okay i just missed one equal to sign and now let's quickly run this once more basically now here you can just see that basically before what i was getting i was getting these circles right now what i am getting i am getting these plus signs okay so i hope you just got the point about the stiff fraction like total bill that basically how we plot this scatter plot and these reg plots so today here we have completed the understanding that basically how we make scatter plots all the parameters of the scatter plot we have discussed and basically we have discussed about reg plots now we'll move further uh, towards the steps data only in the next video so i hope you just got the whole video so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye hello everyone my name is shambhavi and today we are going to discuss about two more plots and they are basically named as line plot and bar plot 
So quickly, let me give a recap that basically in the last videos, what we have discussed. So in the very first part of this uh, data analysis for tips data set, we have just discussed about the libraries, right? They were NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn, and Matplotlib dot Pyplot. And even we have given the short forms to these. Uh, for like, just hold on. Let me just zoom in a little bit so can like you can have a proper idea about this. Okay, now it's fine. Okay, so for in the first video we have just discussed about the libraries which we have just initialized and they were just NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn, and Matplotlib dot Pyplot. Then moving towards uh, moving forward, we have just like read the data and seen that what were the rows and columns in our data we had seen the shape then we had plot the scatter plots and after that we have just added one more column that was tip fraction right and followed by we were, we were discussing scatter plots and basically in the second video also we have discussed some more features about the scatter plot and even we have just discussed about the reg reg plot okay so this was the thing which we have discussed till now now moving towards for today's uh, video we are just going to discuss about the bar plots and line plot that basically what are these two plots and using the seaborn library basically how we plot these things okay so we are just going to discuss these things so let me start writing so i will just write the error s in s so basically this means that short form for my seaborn library and that is s in s okay so in the above like above we oh sorry in the above we have like initialized imported the library that was seaborn right so i have written import seaborn as s in s so s in s was a short form which i have given to my library and the library name was seaborn so that is why i'm just using s in s dot and first i will just plot the line plot okay so i will just write line plot now here what data i'm going to take my data was stored in the variable that was t okay so i would just write data is equal to t let me quickly show you that thing that basically data was written in the T. okay so here we have just taken the variable t and just we have load and uh, like read our data in this variable that was t right so i have just done that thing only here and i have written that data is equal to t fine now what i would do i would just take my x and y axis fine so first thing i would just take my x axis let's say first thing i would just take the same axis which we were taking basically for the scatter and basically for the red plot okay so i would just take total bill okay so total underscore bill and what next we were taking we were taking y is equal to total uh, that was tip fraction and the score fraction fine so this was the thing which we were just taking for the x for the total bill and y was a tip fraction and here we have just plotting the line but now quickly let me run that thing so after running see here what did i got i just got a little bit of like this is how a line plot looks so this is a like not a very clearer idea but yeah this is a like a little bit of idea that basically how this line plot looks here what i have taken i have taken tip fraction and total bill so that is why it is looking little bit of messed up because like data values are much here that is why like here in the between the plots like and the lines these are messed up but when, when we are just going to take higher data higher data in the sense like the data which is clearer then it will not be like that okay so i would just take another example and show you that uh, how we can just do that thing so i will just write s in this dot i would just write here line plot okay and now let's put the brackets now inside this bracket let me tell you that uh, we can just take our uh, data is equal to i taken okay now what i have done i have just taken x is equal to i would take day here okay x is equal to day what else i would do i would do y is equal to and even i would just write here size so y is my size x is my day now what next i would do okay so uh, for now let just let me plot these these things only okay so now just just let me show you and now you will have a clearer idea at basic <coughs> excuse me that basically how a line plot looks like okay so this is how a line plot looks you can just see one like a straight line inside so here what i have just done i have taken on my x as day and on y i have taken size okay so uh, one thing here is that for this line plot and even from uh, all of the plots we need one numerical value one numerical val value is compulsory for plotting any type of plot okay so that is why here when i have taken one categorical and when i have taken numerical values fine so this is basically how a line plot looks now there are several many features inside this line plot also so just let me quickly tell you all of them so here i would just again write this in a short line plot and even i would just write data is equal to t right i would just take x is equal to we are writing day right and what i would do i would just write y is equal to and here i would just write size fine now what i would do i would take hue also now here uh, hue is one more uh, like parameter which we can just take for a line plot and that is hue 
which is equal to time. Now, what is this here? Basically, I have explained these things in the scatter plot itself in very detail. So, if you just want to have a look, so you can just go and have a look over that side for the U. So, see, now here what did I got? I just got a small box here. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. I'd like, okay, fine. Now, now I hope it's, it's totally fine. See, so this is the basically plot which I am getting here. Now, here the things are that uh, there is one box, right? This box, what is this? Here is written, it is written time. And now here lunch and dinner. So basically now from our data set, we have taken the variable that was time. So in time, we are having two times. Either it was lunch or it was dinner, right? So here lunch and dinner. Now lunch is denoted by a blue color line. So here in this plot, you can see one blue color line, right? And one line is for orange colors, right? So in the uh, like uh, this orange is for dinner and this blue is for lunch. So basically this depends on like size is the number of family. Uh, sorry, if I, if size of the family members are basically how many family members from a particular family are coming to arrive to like have a dinner or lunch. So basically this is about the size and here we have written day. So it is like plotting me that, okay, uh, like on which day, what, uh, how many family members came to lunch, how many family members came to dinner, right? This is a whole idea about plotting this kind of box plot. Let me now zoom in out, zoom out again. Fine. So this was the parameter. And now we are just left with one more parameter for this line part. So let me, let me quickly write that. I will just write SNS dot. Okay. I just wrote line dot. And here what I would do, I would just write data is equal to T. Now what I would do, I would just write X is equal to. And here what I would write, you know, the variable which I was taking, that was day. And I would just write Y is equal to. What I was taking, I was taking size. Fine. I would just write size. Now, what else I would do? I would just again write that u also. u is equal to time. Now, what else I would do? I would just take one more parameter here. And that parameter is a style. Okay. Now, according to a style, I would just write in style also. I would just declare as time. And now, when I will just run my program, see. Now, here, what did I got? Now, match it from the above example. That above example, I was getting both of the lines as straight lines, right? But here in this uh, this one example, what I am getting, I am getting uh, like uh, for the lunch time, I am getting the straight line. But for the dinner time, what I am getting, I am getting the dotted lines, right? So this is a basically difference when I just wrote that style. So basically, whatever the uh, variables or whatever the different uh, different things would be present in this time column. So in time, what we have lunch and dinner. Let's say here here uh, here it was like breakfast also, okay? breakfast lunch and dinner so it would be in, in three different style of lines so one should be like straight one one would be dashed and some like dotted and something like that okay so this style parameter does the thing that it basically gives the style to our uh, like uh, to the lines which are just present here according to the number of variables given to it fine so this was the idea about the line plot now let's quickly move towards the bar plot now we are just going to discuss that basically how we make a bar plot using the seaborn library fine so here i would just write sns dot bar plot okay now the uh, like i would just take data is equal to fine I would just write, I would just write a column name for X and even I would just do the same thing for Y. Uh, so for Y, I would just write that size. Now when I will just run my program, so see, now what it just gave me, it gave me that, okay, this much of like, this much was the family size and according to that family size, these, this much males were there and this much female were there, okay? So this was the whole idea about this data that basically according to the family size, how many, how many males and basically how many females were present in that, like in that, like uh, the tips of the data set, right? So this was the whole idea about that one. Now there are several more parameters in this bar plot also. So let me let me quickly discuss that thing. So I will just write SNS dot bar plot, and inside this, what I would write, I would just write data is equal to. T. I would just define my x as the same which I have like defined above. I would just write y is equal to size, okay? And what I would do here also we have the parameter and that parameter is a hue, fine. I would just write hue is equal to, I would just write time here, right? I, I would just run my program. So now have a look here, decide that basically what I got here. So I got that in lunch time and dinner time. So basically here what I am getting that how many males and females are arriving at lunch time and dinner time. And like according to that only, I'm just getting the whole idea about my 
like about my data so basically from here what i am like i can conclude from here that in uh, according to this data which i'm getting according to size and the gender which i have so here male so um like the ratio for the male going at dinner uh, is like high okay and going and the ratio for the male going at lunch is low and uh, like almost for females the ratio for going in lunch and going in is dinner is all like basically same so this blue one denotes the lunch and this orange one denotes the dinner right so this is the idea about plotting this bar plot i don't know like you are able to see or not so just let me zoom in a little bit more and here you can just see that basically be like below uh, here one box is present right and that is basically telling me that which color is like uh, which color is for which one so blue one is for lunch and the orange one is for dinner right so from here i can just get an idea that basically this is the <coughs> excuse me whole thing about this data now even i have some more parameters about this i would just write that one also so here i have just written that fine now i would just like one second okay fine I would just write here is in a plot, and we are just making the bar plot, right? I would just write bar plot, and here I would just write data is equal to t. Okay, I would just write data is equal to t. I would just write x is equal to. I would take the same column. I would for y also. I would take the same column which we have taken above. Now here I would just write the hue also as same. So hue is equal to time. Fine. Now what else I would do? Now here in this bar plot, what we have, we have a parameter that is called as palette. Now, what does this palette do? This basically helps us to to give a particular color to our bars, which are just present here. So, uh, like in the above, what you have seen in the above, lunch was having blue color and dinner was having orange color. Now, what if I want that my lunch should have light light blue and my dinner should have dark blue, something like that. So basically, there what we give, we give a new parameter, and that parameter is palette, right? so inside this uh, like parameter what we give we give the colors that basically which color you want so when i would just run my program so like it, it would take a little bit time and just let me run that thing so like uh, according to your internet connection what it will do it will basically result you the output fine okay so just let me go above yeah so you can just have a look here that the bars which now i am having they are having light blue and dark blue colors so light blue color is for the lunch and the dark blue color is for the dinner right so this is the idea about changing the colors of your bars which are basically present in your data set fine now even we have one more and the last parameter for this and that parameter is it's in this dot i would just write a plot here i would just write and take the same columns which i have just taken previously i would just write the same for why also i would just write hue okay i would just write hue is equal to i would take time and what else what else uh, like i would just de declare that palette also okay p a l e and that's okay p a okay so what what it is saying that basically automatic document okay let it be let it be afterwards i would do that thing okay so palette is equal to and it was blues right b l u e s and afterwards the what i have i have estimator estimator is one of more uh, one more parameter which we have now what it does is then uh, i would just write here np dot median so now what it will give it will just let me know about the median of the bars which are just present let me let me run that thing right so basically it will take okay so what it is saying that it cannot okay so i i just missed writing my data here so data Okay, median M E G I A N. I would just write here as data is equal to T, and I would just put a comma this side. Now, now it's fine. Just let let's quickly run that thing. And yeah, so after running, it would just result me the output with like whatever the output which we will be getting. Okay, so like it's taking a little bit of time due to my internet connection, and yeah. Due to that only, this is taking a little bit of time. So here we like uh, what I would be getting. I would be getting this like the dash which you are seeing, right? So it, they would be just showing me about the median of that respective, right? So just let me see that is that over? Okay, fine. Yeah. So now you can just have a look that basically the bars for both of them are same, but here what I am getting, I am getting the median, right? So this this bar, this small one, this is the median, fine. So this was about discussion of the line plots and bar plots which we have just discussed today and we have even discussed about several parameters which we can just include in this line plot and bar plot right 
So I hope it has got the whole idea about discussion of this line plot and bar plot and basically what are the parameters which you can include and basically how you can make these uh, line plots and bar plots, right? So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and bye-bye. Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi and today we are going to discuss one more plot on the tips data that we were just uh, like we were just doing previously. Today we are going to discuss about the cat plots. Okay, so cat plots are one uh, like one type of plots that are basically uh, involved in the Seaborn library. So these cat plots are under the Seaborn library and just we are going to see that basically how we make that cat plots. And inside that cat plots, we have even some more plots, right? So we are just going to see all of that things today. Fine, so let's get started with the things. So let me give you a quick recap that basically what we were doing, right? So let me just like, zoom in a little bit more fine uh, so now i hope that you can just see the things very clearly fine okay so the first thing is import numpy as np okay so these are the four libraries that we were using so the first one is numpy moving forward with the pandas seaborn and matplotlib.py plot okay so these were the four libraries which you were just dealing with and you were like you were seeing and um, retrieving some data doing some exploratory data analysis using the library so for now i have used my seaborn and matplotlib.py plot these two libraries for doing all of the data analysis all of the exploratory data analysis like uh, making the plots using these libraries seaborn and matplotlib fine so let me just quickly give you an overview that basically if i have written something like import numpy as np so that means numpy is my library which i am importing in this particular notebook which is in google collab and what i am just giving i am giving a short form to this library and that is np fine so i have written just import numpy as np so that means numpy is the library which i'm just using and np is a short form which i'm just giving to this particular library moving towards the pandas we have import pandas rspd so this is also same i'm just importing the pandas library into my this notebook whatever i'm just using right now and i have just given it a like a short form as pdf okay so like uh, i just give the short form because like uh, each and every way I do not need to write pandas and pandas dot read, pandas dot retrieve and all that thing. So I just use a short form that is PD. I can just use this PD anywhere and just I can just like write the program. Fine. So this is a like a shortcut for giving the name. Same for Seaborn. So for Seaborn I have just given as S N S and for that matplotlib dot pipe that I have given P L T. Let me quickly tell you the data which we are dealing with as a tips data that is already in a Seaborn library. So basically I have not downloaded that data in my device. So basically what we can just use for reading that data and that is t is equal to sns dot load underscore data set and the tip. So here I haven't used pd that is pandas y because my sns module the module which I am using here that is Seaborn and the short form that is sns so that is already having the data in stored in it that is tips right so i need not to use pandas for that so i would just be just using that library in which this data is stored and that is seaborn so i just that is why i just use this sns instead of pd for reading my data fine and after that we, these were the things which we have done so i would just give a quick recap to all of you at the last of the video fine so okay now today what, what we are just going to do we are just going to see the cat plot okay I, i'm just going to tell you that basically what are these cat plots and like uh, how we make this cat plot as i just told that under this cat plot we, like um, several other plots also come so let me quickly give you all of the things and before that what i'm just going to do i'm just going to write something about cat plot this side okay i'm sorry just write as text and I would make it as bold and I would just write it in a little bit smaller handwriting. Fine. So let's let's start writing with me only. Okay, so I would just write this is a this is a function. Uh okay, this is a function, not this function. Fine, this function provides access to several access level functions that that show the relationship the relationship between a okay between a numerical and a categorical data a categorical data you can just see it take like take it as categorical variable i have already told that what are the numerical and what are the categorical variables in my previous video okay so so now like not now i'm just going to tell you all of these things if you just want to 
like see that what is the numerical data and even what is the categorical data so what you can just do you can just go to my previous video uh and there you can just have a look about categorical and numerical one data okay so uh this function provides access to several access level functions that show the relationship between a numerical and a categorical variable. Okay, to give the spaces, uh, okay, using one of the several visual, visual representations. Okay, our EP, R E S E N T A T I O N S. Fine. Okay. What I have written here for my cat plot is that this function provides access to level, sorry, access to several access level functions that show the relationship between a numerical and a categorical variable using one of the several visual representations. Okay. Now, just let me tell you that basically what I just mean from here. Here in this cat plot, we have a parameter. That parameter is called kind. Now, this kind parameter, basically what it does. So this kind parameter is kind of a parameter in which basically I can just pass that which kind of plot do I want. So as I just told that cat plot is one of the plots and under that cat plot we have like sub many plots, right? So if I just write that I want box plot. So I would just write kind is equal to box and like that will just demonstrate me the box plot. Let, let's see all of these things while doing the examples. So I would just write SNS plot and here I would just write the plot which we are going to make today and that is cat plot, right? SNS dot cat, but I'll just put the brackets. I would just write data is equal to okay. So uh, above side also the data which we have taken that data was t. Okay, so we have stored the data in the variable and that the name of that variable is t. So I'm just writing here data as t. Now what I am just going to give here, uh, firstly I'm going to give the kind that what kind of plot do I want, right? Let's say here I would just give you a, like demonstrate a example for the kind and let's say here I just take the kind as bar. I would just not take bar because bar plot we have already discussed, discussed so I would just like show you that afterwards. I would just discuss a new type of plot and that is swarm plot, fine. I have just given kind is equal to swarm, okay. So this means that under this cat plot we have a type of kind and the kind is swarm. So I just want the plot that is swarm, fine. The kind for that the plot is swarm plot, fine. Now what else I would just write? I would just give the values for the x and y axis. So I would just write x is equal to and y. And let me just go above and let's see that what are the different rows and different columns which we are having and I will just see here. Okay, so I have total bit, tip, generous, smoker, date, time, size and tip fraction. Fine, so I will just take two one on X I would just take day and on Y I would just take total bill. Okay, so these are the two columns which I am taking one categorical and one numerical column. So in, on X I would just take as day and you can just change these things also if you just wish. For now I am just doing the same. And I would just write total underscore bill. Fine. So on X I have taken A and on Y I have taken total bill. Now what next? What next I'm just going to do? Here, uh, okay, I will just give, give that hue afterwards. For now, I'm just writing this thing only and I will just run the program. Fine. Okay, so here what did I got? I got the like plot between total bill and the day. So these are Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, right? So these are the days and basically this is the total bill, amount of the total bill, fine? Now this is a kind of a plot which we can say, oh, this is a swamp plot. So this is how a, a swamp plot is made. Now what does it refer to and what does it mean? We will discuss all of these things in detail in further videos. But now for now, I would just like to tell you that this is this plot is called a swamp plot. This is how we just make a swamp plot, right? I just wrote this thing here. Now, I just want to like add one more parameter here and that parameter is hue, okay? So, you all know that what is hue parameter, right? I have already described this thing very in very detail in my scatter plot and REG plot videos, okay? So, if you haven't seen that, just go quickly and have a watch over that video. So you just, just get to know that what is this basically hue parameter. Fine. So, here I would just again write SNS dot and my plot is scat plot, right? So, I would just write cat plot in bracket what I would just give. I would write data is equal to t, then what I would just give, I will just get kind is equal to swarm. Okay, so basically why I just write, re write all of these things again and again and why do not I copy because like um, I never copy, even just from my code also, I just never copy the things. Okay, so that is why I just like write the things on my own and this, yeah, this thing I would just prefer you also. 
uh, you should also not copy the above code whatever you have written so you should just write that on your own so with that you can just learn the syntax you you cannot sit on a day uh, like let's say this sunday you can just sit on that day and you just like uh, start learning okay cat plot then the data is t kind and x we have x column we have y then we have hue parameter no the things will not work like this fine so you need to just practice and practice more and while writing again and again and again you will just get a whole idea will just learn everything in a very easier way and you will never forget that thing so that is why i just write each and everything again and again fine so this is like i'm not going to give like do my benefit fine while writing this okay so data is equal to t kind is equal to sum x is equal to d and next we have given the column that is day i had written y is equal to total bill so total underscore bill and now what i was telling you about i was telling you about the hue parameter right so i would just write hue is equal to and here i would just lay let's say i just write in smoker smoker is the hue which i just want to give fine i will just run the program okay now you can just see the difference between both of the plots so in this plot what i was having i was having four colors blue orange green and red but here what i am having i am having only two colors that are blue and orange and it basically shows me that on this particular day this these were the bills and these were the like smoker was yes and the smoker was no where we just see the blue colors that means the smoker is yes and wherever we see the orange color that means smoker is no fine so this is the idea about making the swarm plot using the scat plot and basically like giving the kind of swarm and basically using the hue parameter also inside this thing okay so this was about one now what next plot which i'm going to tell you is the violin plot fine so violin plot is one of the more like um, plots which you basically use for plotting uh, like seeing the data analysis fine so i will just write that thing also sns dot here i would just write cat plot sns dot cat plot in the brackets what i'm going to write i'm going to write data is equal to fine data is equal to t then i will just put a comma then i would just write kind now inside this kind what i am going to do is that i'm going to write the violin okay so that is voi L I N. Okay, so this is the kind of violin. Now, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to plot a violin plot. Right? Next, what I have, I need to give the x and y values, and I'm going to give the same values which I have taken above. Fine. Right? So I will not confuse you, confuse you while taking different different values. No, I will not do that thing. I will just plot all the cat plots in a very like uh, same uh, same like uh, columns. Fine. Right? Total bill. And what else I have? Okay, fine. So I will be just taking the two more functions afterwards. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So it is saying that plot kind value is not recognized. Okay. So have I just made any mistake or something like that? So kind is equal to one. Okay. Let me just let me just do one thing here. What I would do, I would just take the hue also. Okay. Hue is equal to smoker s m o k e r. And what next I have? I have like a split. Split is one of the parameters which you basically. Right in this violin plot, so I would just run that thing. Okay, so it is like saying me that plot kind violin is not recognized. Okay, I like I I I had made some mistake. I just get the thing. So B O I L I N spelling is absolutely fine. And what's the issue? X is equal to D. Y is equal to total will. Hue is equal to smoke. Which state is equal to true. And the data is T, right? Data is also T. That is SNS dot cat plot. Okay, let, let's see that. What's the basically issue here? Okay, so the spelling is wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry for that. V I O L I N. Okay, V I O L I N. I I just was not able to see that thing that I'm written as wrong spelling. Fine. So now here the program is run and yeah, now you can. I would just like remove these two for now so that I can just tell you the difference. Okay, so I will just tell you the difference that what's the difference while writing these things and let me just erase these things and let me now run that okay so now here you can just see that you have just got these four here right and these four are of different colors now what is we are just plotting here we are just plotting about the total bill and the day we're just plotting the uh, violin plot so this is a kind of a violin okay so this is a kind of violin so that is why it is called as violin plot so here we just did that thing i just plotted the things now there are some more parameters which i can just add in this so let, let's quickly do that thing, right i would just now do the things here itself okay so here we would just firstly write split okay s p l i t split is equal to true and now i just run the program 
okay so this is basically like a splitting of my volume thought the split is equal to true and what next i have i have the uh, hue okay hue i will just give as same which you are taking hue is equal to smoke now let me quickly run that thing okay fine so now here you can just see that my all of the volume like volumes are just converted into two colors that are blue and that are orange okay so the blue one demonstrates the yes and for orange we have no smoker yes and smoker no fine so this is about the volume plot so this is how a volume plot looks and basically what are the things which are just here we will not go into that things right now right now what's my basic motive that i should like uh, tell you all of the plots which basically the seaborn library contains after that we will just see each and every plot in a very detail that what does this plot mean uh, like basically what are the things in this plot okay so if you just want to get an idea of the box plot so box for box plot i have already made the video on in the statistics playlist so the video for that is already in the statistics playlist so you can just go and have a look there okay so this was about the violin and the okay so violin and what was the first one swamp plot okay violin and swamp, swamp plot so these were the two plots which just consists under the ca uh, cat plot now other than this we have just bar plot we have a strip plot we have box plot and we even have a, a point plot right so these are the four plots that are left under this cat plot category so i would be covering all these four plots in my next video right so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi and this is the part 2 for the cat plot which we just see. Okay, we were just seeing the cat plot that what are the subplots which we have inside the cat plot and this is the part 2, part two for that specific video. So today I am going to tell you the rest uh, like the rest 4 to 5 plots which are just left for that uh, cat plot. So I am just going to introduce you to them and show you that basically how we can just make that plots within like uh, using the Seaborn library, right? Let me quickly give you a quick revision that we have imported four libraries and these were NumPy, Panda, Seaborn and Matplotlib.py. Okay? And even we have given the short forms to these libraries and they were just followed as NumPy, PD, NP, PD, SNS and PLT. Right? I'm not going to give all these things in very detail because I have already told this in detail in the very first part of this video for the cat plot i have just in the like first part for this cat plot i have told everything in very detail okay so i'm not going to repeat that things right now let me quickly go to the downside and hear what i'm going to tell you okay so this was the definition which i just told you something about that cat plot this function provides access to several access level function that show the relationship between a numerical and a categorical variable using one of the several visual representations fine so this was the definition which i just told you that basically what is this cat plot used for right and then what we have seen we have seen a cat plot for the swamp the kind for this cat plot was swamp what next we have seen okay hold on just let me go down yeah so next we have which we have seen was the violin plot okay so the spelling i had made wrong in the last video that was b i o l i n okay, so you also just keep that thing in mind okay now let me quickly start writing the things for today and today i'm just going to discuss four uh ref, left like there which are left the first one is the bar plot second is a strip third is box and fourth is point right so i'm just going to discuss all of these things today fine let's get started by writing so i will just write sns dot and here i will just write cat plot first okay sns dot cat plot now inside this bracket firstly what i'm going to give i'm going to give the data right so the data in which i have like uh, read my data from the seaborn library so the variable for that is t right so i will just write data is equal to t now comma now x is equal to uh, okay so here firstly i what i would just give i would just give kind okay so i would just give kind is equal to bar now for now i would just firstly make the kind to is equal to bar so basically what i would be getting i would be getting the cat plot the output for the cat plot in the form of bars fine that is fine so kind is equal to bar now what next i have basically here next i have that i need to just write x and y x's okay so i would just put a comma i would just write x is equal to i would just take as the, the same which we were just dealing because i don't want to confuse you by using different different columns for now we will we'll be just see, seeing different columns and more things and in the like further videos okay so here i will just want to give you a proper idea that basically what uh like is a cat plot and what are the like kinds which you can just include in this cat plot fine so x is equal to d and what i just write for y i would just write as total bill 
So it's total under a score but now so this is done i want now what i would just use i would just score like i would just run that fine so here what i have okay so here i have these four bar plots and they are basically total bill and day fine so these are the bar plots uh, like bars which i am having which are like used like basically uh this is a card plot and this that is basically represented in the form of the bars you can just see all the things like that fine now what next i have next i have like um okay so one parameter is just left okay let me quickly go to the previous bar plot which we have made okay so you can see that this is the bar plot basically in previously whatever we have made right but now here what i have just changed i have changed the change even the values and even the like everything is changed for this fine now we have one more parameter in this uh, kind is equal to bar let me quickly show that so i will just write s in this dot and cat plot so basically the ones who are just seeing my video from the very starting and just following all the series you must have guessed that what will be the uh, next parameter which i'm just going to tell and yeah i just hope that you have guessed the right thing so data is equal to t and i will just write first day of work as kind so kind is equal to bar fine now what i would just write i would just add x so x is equal to ever here i would just what i would add i would add day so that is day now i would just write the uh, y so for y what i would just do let me do one thing like, like let me just zoom in a little bit more i hope right so now now i hope it is more clearer and more finer right so x is equal to day and y is equal to total underscore bill okay and the parameter which i was saying that is not smoker that is hue and hue is equal to smoker okay now we'll just run that so here what just i get i now you, you can see the, the, like all the bars which i am getting they are basically uh divided into two things what well, the blue one is that smoker is yes on this particular day and the total bill is this much and basically the orange one is no that no the smoker is not and the bill was particularly this much fine so like this is the idea about plotting this bar plot now so this was about plotting this bar fine now what i would just like uh, take next take i would just like uh, next i would take as okay i would be just dealing with a strip plot now a strip plot is one of the next plots which we are just seeing so sns dot cat plot okay i would just write here as data is equal to t now i would just add kind okay so kind is equal to and i would just write as a strip okay i would just put the semi quote strip fine i would just give the x and y value so the value for x would be okay. And the value for y would okay i would just write here as y is equal to value for y would be total underscore bill this is okay now what next i have next i have um yeah, that, is, that is all after afterwards i would just add that um smoker function right so this is about this is basically how we make a strip plot now let quickly see that what's the difference between the swarm and the strip plot so inside this swamp plot we have like something like it is made like a tree like right something a tree but in the strip plot we do not have like these things we have simply the uh, dots which are just in a straight line so this is a strip plot fine so this is basically how we just make a strip plot and this is basically how a strip plot looks like let me add that uh, next parameter to it so i would just write as in as dot cat plot okay as in as dot cat plot i would just write the bracket again i would just write um, data is equal to t i would just put a comma then kind is equal to a strip right kind is equal to a strip now what i would just write i would just give the value for x x is b and y is equal to total bill so that's total underscore bill and i will add okay hue is equal to smoker so you can just like uh, take different different more things okay fine so here it is added the hue is equal to a smoker so i just got that the smoker uh, like yes the smoker was this much on this particular day and the total bill was this much and no and yeah this is okay fine this is basically how this like a strip plot looks like now what like um what next plot we have next plot which i have i have a box plot fine so the kind for this plot is box so i will just write sns dot okay not act it is cat okay sns dot cat plot i would just take data is equal to t and now i would just write here as kind is equal to and here i would just write b o okay kind is equal to box fine kind i have just given as box and i would just keep this inside the okay i will just keep this thing inside the semi quotes itself fine so yeah 
Now we'll put a comma. I would just write x is equal to this is x is equal would be d. I would just write y is equal to will be total underscore bill b i double l fine and i would just like now i would just give the smoker also the side only fine so i would just write a smoker is e sorry he is equal to a smoker okay h u e u is equal to and then smoker i'll just run that thing okay so this is basically how a box plot looks like and basically what are these lines what are these dash inside this box plot so i'm not going to explain this thing right now because i have already made a very detailed video on this box plot uh, inside my statistics playlist okay so you can just go to my statistics playlist and there you can just search about the box but there you can you will just get that what this this line means that what uh, the horizontal lines means what these vertical lines means basically why this straight line is written in the middle and all, all that things you will just get to know uh, very clearly fine so i'm not going to tell these things right now so this is about the like box and i have now my last uh, kind okay i would just write here sns dot and uh, that is a that is a point plot okay p o i n t so i would just write sns dot cat plot here i would just write again data is equal to t then i would just write kind is equal to point okay p o i n t now what else i have i have x is equal to t fine what i have i have y is equal to total underscore bill and the next i have u is equal to smoker run okay here you will just get a point plot okay so this is basically how a point plot looks it it looks interesting right so whenever we are just going to study the whole detail about the scatter plot it will like um, take a wonderful time and like it is interesting it looks, it looks basically interesting right so smoker yes so this blue lines smoker no these orange yeah it looks wonderful okay so these are the basically uh, like kinds which we have inside the cat plot fine so these are the kinds like which we have inside the cat plot and i have just taken the same column and the same like same uh, columns for the demonstration of all these kinds so let me quickly again show you all of these so first one was the swarm second one was the violin third one was the bar fourth one was the strip fifth one was the box and sixth one was the point plot so these were the six kinds which we have inside the cat plot fine so here we have completed this cat plot to kinds that basically whatever the kinds are in the cat plot we have just completed all of that things in today's video now i what i would do i would just show you all of the plots which we have made till now so these were the plots first one was the scatter plot which we have just seen in the very first video and then i have just introduced you to some parameter first was hue then moving towards the yeah i have just taken to hue and what was the else else was size also then we were having a style uh, yeah style size and all that things okay i was i just told you about this legend one which we have used from the matplotlib library what else i was having and yeah i was having reg rich plot after that i just told you the difference between rich plot and that uh, scatter plot then basically what i have i have just one more parameter inside this rich plot and that was marker i just told you that thing after that we move towards the line plot so these were the line plots which we have made and inside that also we have seen several parameters hue and style and after that we have just moved towards the bar plot and after that bar plot we have moved towards the cat plot and in the, inside this cat plot we were having different different kinds and which i just told you all the things right now okay so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye hello everyone my name is shambhavi and today we are going to discuss about pair plot reset plot and box and plot so basically these three are the types of plots which we have basically when we just want to do some data analysis when we, when we basically uh, like used to do some eda okay perform that eda so in that basically these three plots are more plots which we are needed right so what are the things which we are just doing in this particular series so in this particular series what i am just taking here is that i have just taken a particular library that is cbon right and whatever the plots are there in cbon which are used to make the uh, like uh, which i'm used to make the graphs and which i uh, used to study the data i'm just telling you about all of that plots in a detail right so we are just discussing about all of these plots which are used for doing the exploratory data analysis in basically in a data set whenever you just got that okay so let's begin the lecture like video for today and here what i have i have a library that is numpy right 
so libraries which i have imported is the first one is the numpy so i have written import numpy as np so np is the short form which i have given to this particular library right what next i have next i have import pandas so pandas is the second library which i have here imported and the name for this as i have just given as pd right short form as pd third i have seaborn right so i have written import seaborn as sns so in sns is basically the short form which i have given to the seaborn library and moving towards the fourth i have taken the matplotlib.pyplot as plt right so these are all of the libraries which we are just taking right here okay so we are just going to work over all of these libraries in this particular data set right so my data set is tips now i have not taken a data set which i have stored in my laptop or basically a device okay so this is a data set which is available online so basically this is a data set which is there in the seaborn library itself okay so I, like for that i have written here that t is equal to sns dot load underscore data set and in bracket i have written the name for that data set and it is tips right so this is basically the idea and then i have just tried uh, like doing all the things head stale and many more things i have just done that okay and if you just want to go and have a better idea of what we have done previously so you can just go and have a look over the playlist which we are just like working right now okay that is the data analysis on tips data set right these are all the things which we have completed now today is a turn for the pair plot first we are going to see that basically how we just make the pair plots right so for that just let me quickly write sns dot okay firstly i would just set a particular uh, theme okay uh, set a particular theme okay so t-h-e-m-e okay and in the bracket i would just write here as the style is equal to text okay text means basically i just want it in the uh, the pair plot basically what gives it gives uh, like lot much of data okay a lot much of like um, things from that data so basically what we just wanted that all of these things should be displayed in the x and y axis and basically in the proper way so that is why i just wrote here as style is equal to ticks now when i would just write the whole program and run then i would basically let you know that what is here ticks okay so for that you just need to wait for a little while so i would just write your sns dot pair okay so this is basically how we just write that pair plot okay so it is sns dot pair plot now what next i have next i would just put the bracket right and now here i would just write the name for my data frame and that is df okay and what i would give here i would give here a hue okay let's say hue for me is time let's say i just take this one okay so time is one of the columns which we are having right let me just quickly go above and let me show you that thing fine so this is time is one of the columns which we are having in our data. So just now I would just go down and let me just run this program, this uh, code, whatever I have just written. Okay, so basically it is saying me that df is not defined. So just me, let me check that what I have taken. Okay, I'm sorry. Here instead of df, I have taken t. Okay, so I would just write t here. Let me just again go down and fine. Here just let's quickly write here as t. Fine. Now let's run it once more and yeah, basically it will run and it is going to give you the proper plot. Basically it will take a little bit of time because as I just told that it is a, like it is going to give you a lot of data, right? Now see here, what you have just got, you have got many plots here, right? Scatter plots and even some histograms and all of that things you are just getting here. Now, what are you getting between? See, tip fraction and total bill, tip fraction and tip, tip fraction size and tip fraction and tip fraction so these are the x and y axis on which you are just getting this uh, this plot okay now to study this plot we will not just not move into that thing for right now uh, for studying all of these things you will just see it later but why here i have just taken as u is equal to time because here this blue and uh, like orange and blue color uh, things are separated right so this is because of the hue which i have taken okay now instead of this time i can even take one more hue that is a smoker okay a smoker it's m o p e r and i will just run that after running that uh, here also i would be just getting the required output and just let, let's wait for that because as i just told that it is going to take some time right so here you just got that so now here you can just see that blue color is like telling that smoker is yes on that particular date okay uh, date or whatever the color x and y axis values are being here okay 
and the orange one is showing that it is no fine so i just hope you just got the idea how to make a pair plot okay pair plot using the seaborn now let's quickly move towards the second plot for today and that is reset plot the i would just spell it as r e s i d p l o t okay right so just let me show you that how we just do the thing so i would just write here s n l dot is it out okay and i will just put a bracket so my data is equal to t right my data is t and i will just give some x and y columns so for x i would be just giving as small t and i would just give it as total bill okay total underscore bill fine i would be just doing the same thing for y also for y i would be giving it as something tiff fraction let's say tiff fraction okay uh tiff fraction now now what i have here i have one thing that is lunas okay i would just not show that thing right now just like run this program for a while okay let me just quickly run that fine see this is basically what is called a reset plot now here you can just see your uh, like margin right and so below that you have negative values as well so this is basically what is called as a reset plot this is how you just make it now in this basically you have some more parameters let me just quickly write that so here we have one parameter that is color okay so let's say i just want the red color so i would just write color is equal to r and yeah you can just see that blue dots are have changed into red color because i have written the particular color is equal to r now what next i have here i would just write lowness okay l o w n e w s now what does this basically means so i would just not let you know right now because as soon as i'm going to run the program you will just get that thing on your own only fine uh okay l o w n e w s okay basically it is showing that lowness is equal to true fine let us see that what's the thing and i i don't know okay just let me check out that thing just let me delete it for a while okay fine let me just put that bracket now let, let me just run it once more fine now it is basically not taking that lowness let's not go into that thing for right now we we'll just cover that thing in the last of this video okay but uh, like before that let me let me just quickly show you how to make the box in plot itself this is the last part which we are just going to make for today okay let me just write here as sns dot box in plot okay sns dot box in plot i will just put the bracket i would just write x is equal to let's say i just take the x parameter as day fine i would just take my y parameter as a tip fraction so tip underscore fraction now what i have here i would be taking color now let's say i just specify a particular color that is b okay now i just want the scale to be linear okay i'll just write here a scale and linear okay and what else i have and i need to write that what is the name for my data so my data is data is equal to t and i would just run that fine so here you can just see that here we have got the box in plot so this is basically what box in plot looks like it is something like um, something like box plot right it looks something like that yeah so basically this is the whole idea about making this box in plot that how you are just going to do that thing fine so we have just made that thing uh, on the x we have taken days and on the y we have taken the tip fraction now if we just want to change the color let's say from blue i just want to take uh, r that is red right so i would just do that thing and yeah you can just see that the color has been changed here to red fine so this is basically how you just make this box in plot now let's quickly move towards the reset plot for once more and i would just try to write this thing in the next line here i would just try to see the syntax basically okay so this dot and here i would be just writing as reset r e s i d reset plot and in the bracket i would be writing fine so here let me just quickly check lowness okay it's lowest okay in, instead of this that n we have l o w e w s so just let me do the spelling correct here so here i would just write comma i would write l o w e w s okay is equal to true and now i would just run this now it will basically not show me any error and yeah you can just see that now here can you see that you have you have got one more red line right one is the dotted line which is basically pointing that okay this is the margin for zero origin and another you have just got a red line so this is basically what is called as lowest is equal to true fine so i hope you just got the idea that basically how this a uh, pair plot reset plot and box in plots are made and basically how you're just going to make all these things when you just got a data right so 
inboxing thought what we have done i have taken a categorical variable uh, and even a numerical variable and i have just plot the this box and plot between these two and in this reset plot i have taken both the numerical values and in box and plot uh, sorry reset plot you are having a little bit of uh, lowness so that spelling was right uh, sorry wrong okay so the spelling the correct spelling is l o w e w s not l o w n e w s okay so that is the whole idea and we have even discussed about the pair plot so pair plots is the other plot which basically help you to give a better view and a proper view about your data itself okay so i hope you just got all the ideas that basically how you are just going to make all of these three plots if you just going to get some data and someone asks you to make this plot right so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye hello everyone my name is shambhavi and today we are going to see one like some other plots in basic data seaborn library right so previously what we were doing is let me quickly give you a recap that, that what we have done till now in this particular tips data set which we have taken as a sample for explaining you all of the like all of the plots which you can make using that seaborn library okay so firstly what i have done i have imported the required libraries which i need here for making my plots right the first library was the numpy library okay so i have written import numpy as np so basically what is np np is a short form which i have given to that library now next is pandas so why i have just imported pandas because pandas is used for reading the data right so my data which i have taken which was tips so tips data set is like we need to read that okay but the data which we have taken is tips and tips is one of the data that is already stored in the seaborn library okay so in that in that case i have been used this pandas library in that case i have used this seaborn library for which i have written import seaborn as sns right so in because i have just taken the data set which is already in like already stored in that seaborn library right so i cannot read that thing using pandas right if i'm going to do that then i'm just going to get some errors right some exception some errors that like uh, this seaborn is the data which is basically stored in um, like seaborn library the tips is the data uh, but why we are just like using it from the pandas right so the, the data which is stored in the particular library you just need to use that library for reading that particular data fine so and even we have just taken the math.lib.py plot as plt because this was one of the like uh, in in one of the plots we have just used this math.lib.py plot as plt for some more function right so that is why i have just taken it here right so these are the libraries which we are dealing with in this particular tip state as it so i would just quickly revise that once more that are numpy pandas seaborn and math.lib.py plot right next what i am taking next i am taking this how to just load my data right so for that i have taken a variable so i hope you have just written all of the codes with me from the previous videos itself right and we will be just continuing it for today also and even if you have not done that thing so quickly go and watch the previous videos and have a proper look over all of the things and just write that on the google collab notebook because till the time you are not going to practice this since you are not going to get any of these uh, concepts very clearly i am not saying that you will not get the concepts you will get but you will not get them clearly right so just just practice with me right here only fine so t is the variable which i have taken fine and in that case what i have just used i have used my seaborn library and i had just given it a short form for sns so i have just used that, that after that i have used load underscore data set and the name of the data which is tips fine so this is the whole idea about using this and how we are just loading that data and then we just just take about the head and tail that basically what uh, what is our data right so in the data which we are having we are having columns total bill tip and then gender smoker day time and size so these are the like um, columns which we are having in our data set and we had just included one more column and that column was tip fraction okay so now we are just with these all of these columns right so i would just not uh, like repeat all these things once more let's quickly move towards the like uh, plots for today which we are going to make right so i have just explained you and given uh, given you a little bit of idea that what we have done previously okay right so the plot which we are going to see today is lm plot okay i would just like 
the comment and I will write the name of that plot itself. Okay, this LM plot. Now it is a plot which we are going to see today. Okay, this is a plot which is basically in use to uh, like made by using the Seaborn library. Fine. So for that, firstly what I would do, I would just like uh, set that text. Okay, set the style. So SNS dot set underscore theme. This I have already explained in the previous video that basically how we just do this thing, right? And I would just put the brackets. Now inside that bracket, I would just write style is equal to, I would just once write. So style is equal to, and here I would just add text fine. So this is the thing which I have just done right now. Now I'm just going to write the code for making my LM plot, right? Okay, so firstly, I would just use my Seaborn library as we have just uh, going to make using the Seaborn library. So I have just taken the short form that is SNS, right? Listen to my words very carefully from now because now we are just going to deal with the syntax like uh, sorry parameters and the syntax whatever are there in LM plot and I'm going to tell about all of that parameters in one code itself right I'm just not going to write these codes in uh, different different lines I'm just right I will just write one code and I will just define all the parameters here okay so let's listen to my words very carefully now so SNS dot I will just write the name of that plot which I am going to build that is LN plot fine next i would just justify my x and y columns so let's see on my x i just want the uh, column that is total bill okay that are numerical columns so i just want that total bill should be displayed on my x axis right moving towards my y axis on my y axis i just want that tip fraction would be displayed okay so i would just write tip and here i would just write as fraction right now what i have I have one parameter that is COL, okay, that is basically my color, that what color you want. So let's say I just want four different colors based upon my days, okay. So the days which we are having in our plot, in, in our data, let me just quickly show you that thing. Let me just go above and where's my data, yeah. So here somewhat we have some days like, okay, in the Sunday is there, Sunday, Saturday, yeah, you can just see here Saturday. Uh, Thursday, Sunday, so basically in between Friday would also be there, okay? So this is the whole idea about how you're just going to do that thing. Just let me go down once more. And yeah, so here you can see that we have already made one plot for the days. So in that basically we are having four days that are Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday in our data set, right? Whatever we are just dealing with. So in that case, I would be getting four different colors because in my color column, I have put my day, right? So in that case, I'm just going to get four different colors, right? I would go down because if I'm just going to write in one line, it would be like very messed up, right? So I would just write down, right? Now, I have the parameter that is hue also. So in that hue case, I, I just want to add day only, right? In the hue also, I want to add day. And in my column also, I just want to add day. Now, what next I have? I have, I need to write my data that my data in which variable basically have you stored your data so in our case basically we have stored the data in that key column right for me i have just stored in that particular one right now what i am just left with here we have one more uh, like uh, one more function that is col wrap okay so this column wrap is equal to two. fine this is one more parameter which we have in this lm plot after that i have c i that i would just put as none okay after i would just put as none now what next I have? I have palette. Now palette basically is for the colors, right? P A L E W. Okay, I would just write this time down itself. Okay. So I have palette also in which I just like we need to put some colors, but I would just not put like uh, any particular color here. Fine. Now what next I have? I even have the height. So whatever the height you just want to give to your plot. Okay. So in that case you can just give that particular height. In my case, let's say I would just write as four. Okay. I would just write as four the height. Now, what next or what else I have? I have one more parameter that is scatter underscore kws, right? So, in that basically, you need to give some values, okay? So, I would just go down. Here, I would put that bracket and inside this, I would just write as s is like colon then 50. Because here, I just told that we need to give some values, right? And I need to give some value for alpha itself. A, okay, so it's a l p h a. And I would just give some value and let's say the value is equal to 1. Fine. So this is basically how you are just gonna like make and put the things. And I just just need to make it colon also. Fine. So this is basically how you are just gonna make your LM 
out. Okay, just let's quickly run at okay, module C1 has okay, so it's not N, it's L M. Okay, so I need to in place of N, I need to write here as M. Fine, I will just run it for a while. Let's quickly see that. Okay, so we are just getting our plot. Fine. Okay. So what we have just got here, we just got four plots, right? The first plot is for the day is equal to Thursday. Just, just see here that what it is written it is written day is equal to Thursday. Second plot I have got day is equal to Friday. You can see the difference in the colors, right? The day Thursday is having the color as blue and the day Friday is having the color as orange, fine? Next what I have, next I have day is equal to Saturday. So for Saturday I have the color as green and for Sunday I have the color as red day is equal to sunday so color is red so this is basically how we just make the lm plot right so we will get four plots why because here in the color one and even in the hue i have just put here as day now in place of day if i just gonna put this okay just let me explain a little bit more about this day only so here in this hue i have put the day right so because they are four in our data set which we are having at a thursday friday saturday and sunday right so in that case, I am getting these four plots. Now, if I just take a particular uh, column in which I have only two or three distinct, distinct variables, right? Let, let's take the example for the smoker, okay? If I just write here as a smoker in the hue also and in the color also, I just write here as a smoker. Then I am going to get only two plots. One for a smoker is equal to S, yes, and one for a smoker is equal to no. As you just see that, so one I have for a smoker is equal to yes and second for a smoker is equal to no. So for yes, we have the color that is blue and for no, we have the color that is orange, right? So this is basically how you just make this LM plot in this Seaborn library. So this is one of the plots which we have discussed. Now moving towards the second plot quickly, I would just name that second plot and that second plot is named as point plot, okay, P L O. -T fine let me just quickly write that basically how we are just going to do that thing so i would just take a variable okay and here i would just use that short form for my c bond library and that is sns here i would write okay i need to write joint plot fine now what i would firstly do i would just put firstly give the name for my data so my data is equal to t right i've just given that so t is a variable in which i have stored my data right now what what next i have Okay, so here I would just uh, like justify my X and Y columns, fine. So in my X, let's say I just write here as total underscore bill. I would just take total bill, okay. And in Y, I would just, let's say I would just take um, Y is equal to, I would just take as tip fraction, let's say, okay, tip underscore fraction, fine. Uh, okay, so tip underscore, okay, I just need to remove one I from here. There are two, fine. And I would just put a comma and go down. So the, the things which are just left, I will just write them downside. Fine. Now what here I'm just going to write. I'm just going to add some more things. So I can just even add the hue parameter also. Okay. If I just want, I can add the hue. So in this case, let's say my hue is a smoker. Fine. My hue is a smoker. And what I have, what kind I just want. Okay. So I would just write here kind is equal to KDE. Okay, so this is this, this KDE is also one type of plot. See, plot sorry. Basically, we have different kinds, right? Kind is equal to joint and, and some more things which we have already discussed in that joint plot. So in that case, we have one more kind that is KDE. So I've just written that here. I would just run it for a while and then you would, you can just see that basically how this joint plot looks. Right, so this is our joint plot which we have here. So you can just see that joint plot. Now here what we are just seeing, we are just seeing something like histograms, right? And here what we are just seeing, we are just seeing some circles and all that things. So this is basically what is called as the joint plot, right? This is how we just make the joint plot. And we had made uh, it for total bill and tip fraction. These, these two are the like X and Y values for which we had made this joint plot, right? I hope you just got the idea that how we are just going to make this thing. So even we have taken the hue as a smoker, right? So in that case, we were having two colors. The first two, uh, sorry, we are having two cases in the smoker, yes or no. So in the yes, we are getting the blue color, right? And in no, we are getting the orange color, fine. So this is basically how we just make the joint plot and the LM plot. So these were the two more plots in the Seaborn library. And I just hope that you have made these plots with me itself here in this video only, right? And if you have not done that thing, so what are you just waiting for? Quickly open your laptops and just start making the quotes with me, right? 
so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so now today what we are going to learn about the that data science and basically that data analysis things which we are going to like doing right now that is classes and functions for making complex graphics now till this point whatever the graphs whatever the plots in seaborn library we have covered right that are the basics okay now we have come to an end for the basics of the all the plots whatever we were having in the seaborn library now it's the correct time to move on to a little bit of complex right now the things which we have made previously right let's say that was pair plot let's say that was grid plot that was kde plots and all that plots which we have made previously now it's a time to little bit upgrade that plots right now there are several more features which you can just basically add into that plots and just make it a little bit complex and all that things right so from now onwards in this data science, data analysis series we are just going to see that thing okay now so for that basically what i would just like to do here is that i would just firstly like to put a heading that what is the thing that we are going to cover today fine so i will just put a hash here and the name for my topic is basically classes and functions for making that is for making complex graphics okay so the topic for today okay i just need to write the correct spelling j r okay i just need to remove when in and your a p h i c s fine this is the basically things which you are going to learn and that is classes and functions for making complex graphics okay now let's get started with the things so previously what we have seen previously we have de dealt with only and only data for the tips right that was a seaborn uh, data and we had just uh, like seen the plots and all that things in that particular tips data now we are not going to do the same thing okay now we'll just change our data and now our data would be the penguins now this penguins is also a data which is available in the seaborn library itself okay we just need not to download that or store that in our devices we only need to just quickly write the name that okay this is the data and it will really automatically be imported and we all just already know that what's the like procedure for importing the seaborn data right now let's quickly do the same thing so first of what i am going to do here is that i would import my library that i am going to use today okay and yeah you all know that the one is a seaborn library so i would just write your import okay i would just need to write the correct spelling so it's import seaborn as s n s i just need to okay that is and here i was to remove an a fine so here i have just written import seaborn as s n s okay so here i have just imported my seaborn library and even given it a short form name and that is s n s now i would just run it for a while and just i would check that is there any issues or not so it just cleared and now i just redirect it to the new line from here firstly the first thing basically that comes when you are just going to do any data analysis or in when you are just going to make any graphs so the first step is always start loading your data uh, sorry loading your basically uh, the library which you are going to use so that step we have done now second that comes here is that you need to just import the data whatever you are going to use today so in our case that one is a penguins data right so i would just give it a name and let's the name which i have given here and that is df okay df is the short form uh, like name the variable in which i'm going to store my uh, like penguins data fine so df is equal to now here i would just write sns now that is basically the short form for my seaborn library right i have just written that thing import seaborn as sns so sns is the short form for this library so i just wrote df is equal to sns dot now here i'm going to use load underscore and data set fine so data set that is automatically came here so sns dot load data set we have already seen previously and now also i'm just repeating the same thing that basically whenever you just want to load our data that is already present in the seaborn library so what we just write we just write a short form of the library and that is sns here we put a dot and we use the function that is load underscore data set i would put the brackets here okay inside the brackets i'm just going to write here as penguin so this is the name of my data which i'm going to load here i would just run it for a while here that is basically okay now i would just write df so basically what give does it will show me the top five rows i just need to check that what to, like what is the name for the columns that we are having okay so i would just write df dot and here i would just write head and i would just run it here okay so it just showed me my top five rows and okay so my rows are basically so the columns which i am having that is species island 
and basically bill length mm bill depth mm flipper length body mass oh can gender fine so these are the columns which i am having in my data set now i am going to make some plots here okay now let's let's see that basically what are the things so here i would just take a variable and let's say that variable i have taken here as a okay now in that i'm going to write sns dot pair grids firstly the plot which i am going to make here is the pair grid okay so a is equal to sns dot pair grid and in the bracket okay i just need to come back to the position and in the bracket firstly i would write the name that is penguins okay so penguins right right i would just put a comma here and here i would just write hue now we all know that basically what is hue right we have already seen that thing in the previous video so i'm just not going to repeat that right now okay so hue is equal to now in the hue i'm just going to give the name as species okay so a is equal to sns dot pair grid in bracket i have written penguins penguins is the data set which i am using i put a comma and here i would just write hue is equal to species i would put again uh, like comma here and here i would just write corner is equal to true okay so here i have just made my corner is true and now i would just run it here for a while and let's see that basically what happens okay okay so here i just got something and see here only i just got only the blank ones because what i have done i have only made my pink i only made the pair grid here okay and here i just made the corner is equal to true fine i would just cross it here now i would just write the whole code for the program and then we will just run it at finally okay now what i'm just going to do here is that i would take the okay not here i would just write the same thing in this one only i would take the variable in which what i have stored i have stored my sns dot pair grid okay pair grid i have just stored in stored basically i have just stored that in my variable that is a okay now i am going to use a dot and here i would just use map underscore lower okay map underscore lower is the function that i am using as i just mentioned in the very starting only that from now onwards we are just going to make some complex graph okay so that will also have some complex parameters right that is the absolutely right thing so here i'm just using that a is the main, my variable in which i have stored my pair grid a dot map underscore lower fine now i would put the brackets now here i would just use my library short form and that is uh, sns for my seaborn library so sns dot and here i would just write kde plot okay so the kde is the plot which we are going to use here okay so sns dot kde plot i would put a comma here then comma uh, hue is equal to now what hue do i basically want here so in that here i would just write as none i don't want any hue particular because in this pair grid i have already taken my hue as a species so i just need not to mention it here fine so i would just put again a comma and here i would just write levels now what levels do you want so just let me write here okay now levels is equal to 5 now basically level is equal to 5 and at last what i am just left with i left with the color that basically what color you are want so as i mentioned that again i'm just saying that we are going to make some complex graph so in that now we are just going to give some color values now i'm just not going to write the name that uh, for which column i do i do want the color and all that things right so here i'm just going to add some value here fine so a dot map underscore lower in bracket sns dot kde plot comma hue is equal to none comma levels is equal to 5 comma color is equal to point that is okay now let's quickly move towards the next one so for the next one also i'm just going to like use the same thing so here i would just write a dot map underscore lower okay a dot map underscore lower now inside the bracket i'm going to use one new plot and that one is the scatter first in the first line i have used my pair grid to make the grids whatever we have just seen previously okay in the second line i have used my kde plot now okay to so kde plus what plot i just wanted to make that so i just use this kde plot and the third line i'm going to use my scatter plot a scatter plot okay that is also done i would put a comma and here i would just set a marker that in what shape i just want the points that appear let's say in my case i would just put as plus okay so if i'm just not going to put any marker any like particular shape so in that case it is basically going to come in the circles right but i just mentioned plus sign here so all the dots which we will see that will be appearing in the plus sign right i would just put a down line now here i would just use a dot again i would just use the same uh, parameter which we have used a dot map underscore lower now inside this lower function what i am going to use here is that i would be using my sns dot sns dot hist plot now this is the another plot which i would be using here fine 
Okay, I will put a comma and just let me quickly show you that. Okay, okay, I just put the comma here. Now here I will just write element and uh, element is equal to now what element I'm just going to give here is that element I'm going to give here as fine. I would again put a comma. Now what line width do I want? Okay, so in that case I'm just going to use as line width w i t t h. So line width I want zero. I don't want any line width. Okay, so in that case I just wrote here as zero. Now what next? Okay, I just need to comma. And what next? I am just left with. I am left with KDE. Okay, so in that case, I am just going to write that KDE. KDE is equal to true. Okay, I am just setting it as true. Now I would just do enter here. Now what I am left with? Now I would just make a frame. Okay, so in that case, I would be using a dot add underscore legend. Add underscore legend is the function which I would be using now. So in the bracket, I would be writing frame. F R A M E frame on is equal to true. Okay, just let me quickly show you that thing also. So frame on. Okay, I've just written that thing, and here I would just put it as true. So true, right? Now what next? I'm left with here. I would be using a dot legend. Okay, a dot legend. Legend is my another function which I am using. So a dot legend. And now here I would just put again a dot, and here I would use the function, and that is okay. That is set uh, underscore b box. Underscore to anchor. Uh, this is my another function which I am just using you. That is set set b box to anchor. Okay, and inside the brackets, I am gonna give some values here. Okay, let's say my values are point six one and comma point six. Now values basically differs. You can just choose some values on the on your like uh, whatever you want. Then you can just try some hands on in this, and then again you can change. So this is the like procedure how we learn. Correct, right. So here I just wrote the whole code. In the first line, I have just used my pair grid. In the second line, I have used my KDE plot. In the third line, I used my scatter plot. In the fourth line, I used my hist plot. In the fifth line, I used dot uh, like add legend function. And at last, I used set b box to anchor. And now I would just run this program for a while and let's quickly see that basically what output we are gonna get here, right? Now. Uh, we will be getting some different different outputs in different different lines because here we have uh, like used many functions, right? So in that case, right? Just let me go above. Okay, so basically my first one is empty. Why it is empty? I just need to check that thing. Why it is empty? Basically, so hue is equal to species. So instead of this penguins, if I just I will just write here df. And now if I just run it for a while, let's quickly see that once more. So, because I have just stored my penguins data into the DF, yeah, I, I, right. I have just stored that into my DF column. So that is why I was just checking that what happened here. Again, it is blank, and just let me see that why it is giving me this thing. So, okay, body flipper, flipper length, and okay. So the first one was KDE plot, right? So it. Okay, so basically the error. Let's let's quickly see that what's the error. So here it's map lower, map lower. Okay, I just I just missed that lower. So instead, okay, just let me put the line here. Okay, so instead of this layer here, it would be D I A G. Okay, so I need to if I just need to print that his plot. So in that case, I just need to use map underscore D I A G. And now I will just run it for a while. Now let's see that basically what happens. So we again just get some errors, or basically now we are just gonna get the correct output. Okay. So basically, as I mentioned, that there are several dots, so it will just take a little bit of time. And yeah, now it is here basically. Now quickly check that the first one was the KDE plot, second one was the scatter plot. Okay, so the KDE plot, then basically you are able to see this right here. Is scatter plot is also present. Okay, now third one was the his plot, so scatter plot and then his plot also right. And this series basically goes on. Now here I am getting the basically these plots. Over all the columns, whichever I have, I am having basically the numerical columns. Okay, build length mm, build length, build depth mm, flipper length and body mass g. Let's quickly go above and see these four are the numerical. Sorry, uh, yeah, numerical columns which I am having in my data set. Right, that was build underscore length underscore mm, build underscore depth underscore mm, flipper underscore length underscore mm, and body underscore mass underscore g. Right, these are the columns. Which I am having the numerical columns in my data set. So numerical columns, I will just again tell you the definition. That numerical columns are the columns which are basically having some numerical values associated with them. Okay, and you can just check out here also. We are just getting the same things, right? So this is basically how you can just make some 
like complex fun complex graphics uh, using classes and functions i mentioned that we have used the functions also here right we have used several functions there okay so this is the whole idea how you can just make this plots a little bit more complex a little bit more finer to look into the data okay whatever the data you are having so here i have taken the data for the penguins right so i hope you just got the idea that how you are just gonna do these things okay how you are just gonna make this plots how you're just gonna make these graphs and all that things right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so now today what we are basically going to see is that how we can just make a hist plot in python so basically his plot is type of a plot in which which is basically like made using the cmon library okay so till the series of the data analysis what we are actually seeing is that we are actually seeing that basically let's say you have taken a data set okay data set is from the cmon library itself now how to just plot different different kinds of plots using the cmon library so we are seeing all of these things till now right so today also i'm just going to continue that thing and today i'm going to tell you that basically how to make a hist plot in python okay in this basically in using the cmon library so what i would just do here for a while i would just give the heading that what plot actually i'm going to make today and i will just put a hash here and here i would just write that i'm just going to make one plot and that is basically hist plot so spelling for that is basically h i s t p l o t is plot okay this is how it is it's just basically right now so the first step whenever we just want to import whenever we just want to read any data or make any plot or we just want to do data cleaning or we just want to do data analysis right anything we just want to do, do from any data so the very first step that comes here is that now just please listen to me very carefully because i'm just going to tell you the correct steps also for doing the data analysis on a particular data set okay so the first step that comes here is the importing of the libraries right so you need to import the libraries whatever you are going to use today in your data analysis fine so firstly i would import i would import cborn as sns so this is a basically library which i am importing because i'm going to make the plots using my cborn library correct so that is the reason that i am importing my cborn library now what is the procedure so procedure is that we'll be using import and then writing the name for the library which you need to import so in our case the first library that we need to import is cborn right and after that basically what we do we get uh, we give a basically short form to this cborn library okay and that we have taken as sns fine the, the first line is very clear right now let's move to the second library which will be importing and that is the matplotlib so basically matplotlib library is being used a little bit here okay only one function of that library is used in making the hist plot so i will be telling you that library that function okay so import matplotlib as as let's say i just give it a short form as mpl oh okay so i would just do yeah mpl now what third i just need to import i just need third uh, the third library which i would be importing is import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so here i would be writing import import matplotlib yes my matplotlib.pyplot as pl right so these are the th three libraries which i have just used here okay and what i would just do here i would just set the style style is equal to text okay so in that case i would be writing sns dot set underscore theme okay and in the bracket style is equal to and here i would just set the style as text okay so i would just write here as single i and text and now i would just run this program fine so basically it will just run and yeah here i just just did not got any error because i have written the spellings and everything as correct fine now after importing the libraries whenever you're just going to do the data analysis so after importing the libraries what's the second step that you need to follow the second step is here that you need to write and import the data in this file okay now you know, need to read your csv data whatever the data you are using it is uh, like either it is from your desktop you are taking it or you are taking it from any website that like basically that doesn't matter so right so you just need to import your data and read your data into the csv format or whatever the format you are having of your data 
right so here what i would be taking i would be taking df now df is the variable in which what i would be doing in which i would be reading my data in which i would be loading my data right so previously also in previous videos also i have already told you that if you want to read a data if you just want to import a data from any particular library okay so because there are several libraries that are having their own data so let's just, we take the example for seaborn only so seaborn is a library which is having its own data right so in that case what will be doing you need to import that data use that data from that particular library only so in that case you need not to download the data on your desktop or devices okay so what we'll be using we will be simply using the name for the library the short form for the library from which we will be taking the data okay so in our case that library is seaborn so i just wrote the short form here for seaborn and that is sns okay now what's the next thing that i would be doing i would be writing here dot load underscore data set so here what i am doing i am loading the data set from the seaborn library okay and what is the name for the data set? The name for the data set is diamonds. Okay, so diamonds is the data set that I am importing, that I am loading from the Seaborn library. And now I would just run it, fine? Now, let me just quickly explain that what's the whole meaning for, for the second line. So just listen to me very carefully now. That here, I am loading the data set that is diamonds. Okay, I'm loading the data set that is diamonds from the Seaborn library and storing that data into the variable and that variable is actually df right so i hope now you just got the idea that what's the meaning absolute correctly meaning for the second line right now what comes here is that i just need to check out that data in my data that what are the columns and rows which i am having right so i'll be putting df dot here now about these functions we had already discussed so i would just not repeat that here for a while okay i would just not repeat that thing fine so I have the columns that are carrot, cut, color, cut, clarity, depth, table, price, x, y, z. Okay. So these are basically the columns which I am having in my data, right? So here basically we have three. Okay, we have three categorical and rest and numerical. Fine. So we'll be using some numerical one only for plotting the his plot. Okay. So I would be just coming down here. And now my next step is that I I can even set a particular size that the plot which should be plotted i just want this plot to be plotted in this particular size okay so for that what i will be doing i'm writing f comma ax f comma ax is equal to plt now have a look that at like for plt what we had used for plt is a short form for the library that is matplotlib.pyplot so now that is why only why I have just imported this matplotlib.pyplot because I wanted to set the size for my figures. So I want to set the size for my hist plot. Okay, so plt dot and here it is subplot. Fine. And in the bracket, I would be giving fig size f i g s i z e. Okay, let me show you that thing here. So okay, so plt dot subplot and in bracket I would be giving fig size and here is equal to and I would be putting the bracket and inside this bracket I would be passing the value for the length and the breadth. Okay, length and the breadth. Fine. Let's say I'm just passing here eight comma six. Fine. These are the values which I have just passed. You can just like take any one of your choice. That's no issue here. Fine. Now what I will be doing I will be plotting my hist plot here. Okay, so sns dot. Okay, let me just uh, yeah I would be just writing here only. SNS dot hist plot. Okay, so SNS is a short form for my Seaborn library, and his plot is the plot which we are going to make. So I would just put the bracket here, and now, okay. So I would be doing one thing. I would be zooming out a little bit because otherwise I will not be able to write here. Okay, okay. Right. So SNS dot hist plot. Now what I need to do uh, give the first one, and that is basically I would be giving the variable in which i have stored my data so in our case that variable name is def right next thing i would be giving the value for x okay let's say in my case i would be taking the column that is price okay i'm just taking a numerical column you can just take any column of your choice next parameter which we'll be passing is hue so in hue also you can just give any any column a name and let's say i just give the cut is that there right so cut is one of the uh, categorical column and price is one of the numerical column right so i have just taken both of the categorical and numerical both columns i would put a comma 
Now I would just use one more function here that is multiple and multiple is equal to stack. Now what I actually mean here is that I okay I would just explain you multiple is equal to stack when I would just run this program and when the figure would come. So at that point I would explain you that what is actually a stack. So I will just give you a brief idea about the stack that it is a like let's say it is a line okay and in that line basically it is subdivided okay. Uh, in that line, that line is particularly subdivided in two parts or three parts or four parts. That is actually called a stack. Okay, right. Now, what next I would be having? I would put a comment come down. Now, here what I can just do here is that I can just give a color, palette color. Okay, that what color actually you want. So, I would be using the very function that is palette and P A L E double T E. I would put an equal to sign and here I would just give some name. Let's say that is right, like colon. M dash R. Now you can just basically search out the what are the different palettes in Seaborn through the Google. Okay, you just go and have a look on Google that what's the palette colors, and you can just like try any one of them, whatever you wish. Fine. Right? So now next, what I would be doing here, I would be giving some edge color. Okay, so edge color. Now basically, whatever the edges would be made. So for that, basically, we would be giving some particular color. Let's in my case, I would be giving 0.3. Okay. Now I also can give a parameter that is line width. So what in the histogram, whatever the lines will be appearing. Okay, what type of like what width do you want in that lines? Okay, let's say I just give 0.4 here. 0.4, right? Now what I would just do, I would just again put one comma here and come down basically. And my last one is log underscore scale. Okay, I would just like show you that thing. So log underscore scale is one of the more parameter. And that I would just set here as true and I would put a comma and that is now okay fine this is basically how we just define several parameters inside this now after this I am left with two uh, two more things that I'll be just writing here so just let me quickly remove this one fine so now here what I would be doing is that I would be coming down okay and now here I would be using ax dot x axis okay now I would just uh, like uh, uh, like setting a format okay so here I would be using ax dot x axis ax dot x axis dot set underscore major underscore formatter okay a formatter fine and inside this basically I would be using my matplotlib library for that I have given the short form as mpl remember so in that case I would be using mpl dot picker dot and here I'd be using a scalar formatter okay scalar formatter fine and this is the function that I just use and I would just come down and now I would be giving the x fix values okay so here I will be using ax dot set underscore x ticks okay that we have declared above remember I would be putting the bracket and I would be declaring a list here and I would be giving some values let's say that are 500 then 1000 they will be at the interval of 500 okay uh, somewhat 500 then uh, like basically they have the values of themselves okay 200 and then let's say 5000 and here that is 10,000 okay so fine so here we just wrote the whole code for displaying the histogram and now I would just run this for a while and I would just say that invalid argument. Uh, okay, here I just need to put the end underscore. Fine. Now I would just run this again for a while here. And let's see that basically what happens. Fine. So here I just got my histogram as the output. Now this is basically what a histogram actually looks like. Okay, this is actually what a histogram looks like. Now here you are able to see lines. Now we had just set a particular width for the line. So all the lines are in that particular width only. That was 0.4. We had done price and your count is approximately this thing which we have taken. Okay. Now what was price? Price was 500, 1000, 2000, 5000 and 10,000. So these were the values which we have set here right for the x axis. What were the values which we have set? So these were the values which I had just set here for the x axis that these values should disappear. So it should appear in the x axis and my hist plot should be made here right. So this is done. Now when I was just talking, talking about multiple stack okay. The multiple stack now here you, you are able to see that there is one single line. And in one single line, that line is divided into sub parts, correct? You are able to see that thing, correct? So that is basically what is called as multiple stack. And now if I just remove this palette one, okay, I would just remove this here from here. 
and now when i okay just let me put set here and let's let me quickly quickly copy it and now i will just move and I, I will just again run my program here for a while okay now you are able to see that it has come into different colors right so that basically depends on you that do you want to give a particular color or you do not want to give a particular color so here it is like clearly visible you are you can like clearly see the different different colors and clearly uh, like take it from here that what is actually the cut and cut in cut blue is ideal orange is premium green is very good and then basically pink or just something red is good and light purple is fair right this is actually how a histogram looks like okay so i just hope i made this thing very clear to you that how to just put all of these things now if i just remove this column that is edge color i would just remove this also and i would just remove it from here and now i would just run my program here for a while so let's let's see that basically now what happens now you're able to see the difference right previously in edge color what was happening here black colors were appearing so that it was differentiating each and everything very clearly now white lines are coming that are actually not differentiating the things very clearly right so that is the reason that why i was just using that uh, here so i would just again use edge color point here. let's say i just make it to point four here and now i would just run my program here for a while now you'll be able to see that now you're able to see the color right that color which is present here and what which is actually dividing this right so now i hope that you must have got the idea that basically how to make a hist histogram sorry hist plot right so these are the parameters which you can include in this hist plot and this is how you can just make a hist plot using the data right so i hope i just made this thing very clear to you and even you had made the hist plot on your own using any data set right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi and this is the part two for the cat plot which we just see okay we just seeing the cat plot that what are the subplots which we have inside the cat plot and this is the part two part two for that specific video so today i'm going to tell you the rest uh, like the rest four to five plots which are just left for that uh, cat plots i'm just going to introduce you to them and show you that basically how we can just make that plots within like uh, using the seaborn library right let me quickly give you a quick revision that we have imported four libraries and these were numpy panda seaborn and matplotlib.py okay and even we have given the short forms to these libraries and they were just followed as numpy pd NPPD, SNS, and plt right i'm not gonna give all these things in very detail because i have already told this in detail in the very first part of this video for the cat plot i have just in the like first part for this cat plot i have told everything in very detail okay so i'm not going to repeat that things right now let me quickly go to the downside and here what i'm going to tell you okay so this was the definition which i just told you something about that cat plot this function provides access to several access level function that show the relationship between a numerical and a categorical variable using one of the several visual representations fine so this was the definition which i just told you that basically what is this cat plot used for right and then what we have seen we have seen a cat plot for the swamp the kind for this cat plot was swamp what next we have seen okay hold on this let me go down yeah so next we have which we have seen was the violent plot okay so the spelling i had made wrong in the last video that was v i o l i n okay, so you also just keep that thing in mind okay now let me quickly start writing the things for today and today i'm just going to discuss four uh ref, left like there which are left the first one is the bar plot second is a strip third is box and fourth is point fine so i'm just going to discuss all of these things today fine let's get started by writing so i would just write sns dot and here i would just write cat plot first okay sns dot cat plot now inside this bracket firstly what i'm going to give i'm going to give the data right so the data in which i have like uh, read my data from the seaborn library so the variable for that is t right so i will just write data is equal to t now comma now x is equal to uh, okay so here firstly i what i would just give i would just give kind okay so i would just give kind is equal to bar now for now i would just firstly make the kind to is equal to bar so basically what i would be getting i would be getting the cat plot the output for the cat plot in the form of bars fine that is fine so kind is equal to bar now what next i have basically here next i have that i need to just write x and y x's okay so i would just put a comma i would just write x is equal to i would just take as the the same which we were just dealing because i don't want to confuse you while using different different columns for now 
we we just see, seeing different columns and more things and in the like further videos okay so here i will just want to give you a proper idea that basically what uh like is a cat plot and what are the like kinds which you can just include in this cat plot fine so x is equal to d and what i just write for y i would just write as total bill so it's total underscore bill now so this is done i want now what i would just use i would just score like i would just run that fine so here what i have okay so here i have these four bar plots and they are basically total bill and d fine so these are the bar plots uh, like bars which i am having which are like use like basically uh, this is a cat plot and this that is basically represented in the form of the bars. You can just see all the things like that fine Now what next I have next I have like um, Okay, so one parameter is just left. Okay, let me quickly go to the previous bar plot which we have made Okay, so you can see that this is the bar plot basically in previously whatever we have made right but now here what I have just changed I have changed the change even the values and even the like everything is changed for this fine now we have one more parameter in this uh, kind is equal to bar let me quickly show that so i will just write s in this dot and cat plot so basically the ones who are just seeing my video from the very starting and just following all the series you must have guessed that what will be the uh, next parameter which i'm just going to tell and yeah i just hope that you have guessed the right thing so data is equal to t and i will just write first day uh, first day as kind so kind is equal to bar fine now what i would just write i would just add x so x is equal to ever here i would just what i would add i would add d so that is d now i will just write a uh, y so for y what i would just do let me do one thing like, like let me just zoom in a little bit more i hope right so now now i hope it is more clear and more finer right so x is equal to d and y is equal to total underscore bit okay and the parameter which i was saying that is not smoker that is hue and hue is equal to smoker okay now we'll just run that so here what just i get i now you, you can see the, the, like all the bars which i am getting they are basically uh divided into two things one well, the blue one is that smoker is yes on this particular day and the total bill is this much and basically the orange one is no that no the smoker is not and the bill was particularly this much fine so like this is the idea about plotting this bar plot now so this was about plotting this bar fine now what i would just like uh, take next take i would just like uh, next i would take as okay i would be just dealing with a strip plot now a strip plot is one of the next plots which we are just seeing so sns dot cat plot okay i would just write here as data is equal to t now i would just add kind okay so kind is equal to and i would just write as a strip okay i would just put the semi quote strip fine i would just give the x and y value so the value for x would be okay. And the value for y would okay i would just write here as y is equal to value for y would be total underscore bill this is okay now what next i have next i have um yeah, that, is, that is all after afterwards i would just add that um smoker function right so this is about this is basically how we make a strip plot now let us quickly see that what's the difference between the swarm and the strip plot so inside the swamp plot we have like something like it is made like a tree like right something a tree but in the strip plot we do not have like these things we have simply the uh, dots which are just in a straight line so this is a strip plot fine so this is basically how we just make a strip plot and this is basically how a strip plot looks like let me add that uh, next parameter to it so i would just write as in this dot cat plot okay as in this dot cat plot i would just write the bracket again i would just write um, data is equal to t i would just put a comma then kind is equal to a strip right? kind is equal to a strip now what i would just write i would just give the value for x x is b and y is equal to total bill so that's total underscore bill and i will add okay hue is equal to smoke group. so you can just like uh, take different different more things okay fine so here it is added the hue is equal to a smoker so i just got that the smoker uh, like yes the smoker was this much on this particular day and the total bill was this much and no and yeah this is okay fine this is basically how this like a strip plot looks like now what like um what next plot we have next plot which i have i have a box plot fine so the kind for this plot is box so i will just write sns dot okay not act it is cat okay sns dot cat plot i would just take data is equal to t 
and now i will just write here as kind is equal to and here i will just write bo okay kind is equal to box fine kind i have just given as box and i would just keep this inside the okay i would just keep this thing inside the semi quotes itself fine so yeah now let's put a comma i would just write x is equal to this is x is equal would be day i would just write y is equal to will be total underscore bill b i double l fine and i would just like now i would just give the smoker also this side only fine so i would just write a smoker is e sorry he is equal to a smoker okay h u a hue is equal to and then a smoker i'll just run that thing okay so this is basically how a box plot looks like and basically what are these lines what are these dash inside this box plot? so i'm not going to explain this thing right now because i have already made a very detailed video on this box plot uh, inside my statistics playlist okay so you can just go to my statistics playlist and there you can just search about the box but there you can you will just get that what this this line means that what uh, the horizontal lines means what these vertical lines means basically why this straight line is written in the middle and all, all that things you will just get to know uh, very clearly fine so i'm not going to tell these things right now so this is about the like box and i have now my last uh, kind okay i would just write here sns dot and uh, that is a that is a point plot okay p o i n t so i would just write sns dot cat plot here i would just write again Data is equal to t. Then I would just write kind is equal to point. Okay, p o i n t. Now what else I have? I have x is equal to d. Fine. What I have? I have y is equal to total underscore bill. And the next I have u is equal to smoker. Run. Okay. Here you will just get a point plot. Okay. So this is basically how a point plot looks. It it looks interesting, right? So whenever we are just going to study the whole detail about the scatter plot, it will like um, take a wonderful time and like it is interesting it looks, it looks basically interesting right so smoker yes so this blue lines smoker no these orange yeah it looks wonderful okay so these are the basically uh, like kinds which we have inside the cat plot fine so these are the kinds like which we have inside the cat plot and i have just taken the same column and the same like same uh, columns for the demonstration of all these kinds so let me quickly again show you all of these so first one was the swarm second one was the violin third one was the bar fourth one was the strip fifth one was the box and sixth one was the point plot so these were the six kinds which we have inside the cat plot fine so here we have completed this cat plot to kinds that basically whatever the kinds are in the cat plot we have just completed all of that things in today's video now i what i would do i would just show you all of the plots which we have made till now so these were the plots first one was the scatter plot which we have just seen in the very first video and then i have just introduced you to some parameter first was hue then moving towards the yeah i would just take into hue and what was the else else was size also then we were having a style uh, yeah style size and all that things okay i was i just told you about this legend one which we have used from the matplotlib library what else i was having and yeah i was having reg rich plot after that i just told you the difference between rich plot and that scatter plot then basically what i have i have just one more parameter inside this rich plot and that was marker i just told you that thing after that we move towards the line plot so these were the line plots which we have made and inside that also we have seen several parameters hue and style and after that we have just moved towards the bar plot and after that bar plot we have moved towards the cat plot and in the, inside this cat plot we were having different different kites and which i just told you all the things right now okay so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye